Hello, welcome back. Uh, today we'll be going over another in the uh, Security Basics series of videos and today's topic is going to be Login Block. Okay. And probably the best way to uh, describe Login Block is to actually go over the uh, type of attacks that Login Block was created to mitigate. And the first of these attacks is a, a denial of service or DOS attack. And that's when an attacker sends a flood of login requests to your router. Uh, the router must then expend some of its CPU in order to process these requests. This uh, reduces the available CPU processing for other tasks and could theoretically lock up your router. So what's going on here is generally um, a script and uh, an attacker is sending a, uh, a login request that says, my name is Joe Blow, my password is, you know, booty monkey. Uh, the router takes a look at that and it says, well, Joe Blow, I don't have you listed in my user database. Uh, therefore, I'm going to deny your request. And then, you know, he sends a subsequent request. It could be the same username, could be a different username. Anyways, the gist of this is that they send enough of these that it um, starts taking up an appreciable amount of the router CPU. And while it probably isn't going to get to 100%, um, it, it could go, you know, high enough where it starts affecting other um, important processes on your router, such as, you know, routing or, you know, QoS or something like that. The second type of attack is a dictionary login attack. And this is where an attacker attempts to log into your router by sending, you know, thousands or millions of username password combinations until they're able to gain entry to your router. And um, this is, you know, pretty simplistic attack. It's just going to say, okay, I'm going to send a, a login request with the username A and the password A. And the router says, no, I nah, don't have that. Next. Uh, a, A, and A. Uh, similar to that, it takes a long time and depending on how tightly you have your uh, your um, username password set up, it, it could take a very, very long time. But if you have something stupid like Cisco Cisco as your uh, username password combination, it wouldn't take it very long. And actually it's going to so, use uh, mitigating attacks. Common stuff like so that in default. Login block mitigates and DOS letter and letter dictionary attack. login attacks. But um, basically the difference it's between, between the required delay is that the denial of service terms. attack is just trying and, and what to this is going to do, this is going to router just uh, not get down well make it so the, that you can't do anything. Whereas DOS a dictionary attacks. login attack so they're normally actually trying to get onto your router, say, you know, and, uh, okay, once they do, it's going to process yeah, one after just another after another. Or another you know, so see quickly as you can send them, looks like, or the router is going to process the, the login and can start But if you put a delay delay on there, you so login block is is created to uh, mitigate these yeah. types of attacks. You're going to try and log in, have a failed login. The router won't allow you to log in again for another five seconds. So you can see that this would, you know, this would help out so that you're not eating up CPU cycles, you know, by processing a million uh, login requests and it also helps with the dictionary login attack because it's actually going to uh, take that login even though a dictionary login attack can take a long time it's gonna make it just that much longer because you're not gonna be send you know just tons of these requests you're gonna have to wait five seconds and send another request you can see that that would just take you know incredible amounts of time to to um, guess the uh, username password combination for your router Okay, and the next three bullet points really get to the, uh, the meat of the matter as far as login block is concerned. So limiting the amount of failed login attempts within a specified period of time and you use the login block for command for that. And then after that, the above threshold is met, block all further login attempts and that's what the actual login blocking is referred to uh, for a specified period of time. And the time that it's the router is blocking these attempts is called the quiet period. I guess it makes sense. Um, once the quiet period is elapsed, once again, allow login attempts, and which is pretty important because you, you do want to have to eventually get into your, uh, your router. Uh, and that's called normal mode. So basically what's happening here is you're going to configure your router to say, you know, if there's three login failures, within you know 10 seconds that might be an attack so what I want to do at that point is I want to go ahead and for the next let's say 30 seconds I just want to block any further incoming login attempts you know just make it so that nobody can log in and then after those you know that 30 seconds has expired let's go ahead and allow process processing of login attempts again 
And what this is going to do, it's going to, you know, of course, mitigate the uh, the DOS attack because the the attacker is not going to be able to flood your your router with um, bogus login attempts, and uh, it's also going to make the uh, the dictionary attack just painfully long. And that's what you're trying to achieve here. You know, it's it they use the word mitigating for a reason. It's it's not stopping these attacks. It's just making it to where it's so painful for the attacker that they're going to want to look at easier targets and that's what hackers are going to look for they're just like somebody that's going to rob a house they're going to go for the house that has the uh, the doors unlocked uh, the windows open nobody home um, rather than the house that has the gate the pit bulls and the the alarm system it's just you know more bang for your buck ROI to put it into business speak so then this last bullet point here, generating login messages for login detection, that's actually pretty cool. So it's not only going to block these attempts, you know, it's going to also generate log messages for, you know, failed logins and you can set it up for successful logins as well. Because you, you might not be running into hackers, you might just be running into, you know, your your coworker or some end user that's supposed to have access to this box. And they're going to page out in the middle of the night and say, hey, yeah, your router's not working. I can't get in. And so you'll be able to get onto the router and um, take a look at the login messages. The cool thing about the login messages, as we'll see later on, is that it'll tell you why it failed. If it was a bad uh, username or a bad password. So you can uh, use that to troubleshoot why somebody can't get into a box. Okay, moving on. Uh, login block functions. And... Um, this is really just going to describe what I uh, just spoke about in the last slide. And it's Cisco's verbiage for um, describing the functions of login block. So I would commit these to memory if you're going to be taking the uh, Cisco exam. And I believe this is going to come up on the CCNA security exam. It might come up on one of the CCSP exams. Um, but anyways, what Cisco or how Cisco describes this is uh, delays between successful login attempts. Uh, login shutdown if DOS attacks are suspected, and generation of system logging messages for login detection. So I'm not going to go over these again. This is basically just Cisco's way of uh, describing what I just talked about in the uh, last slide. Okay, well, it looks like I lied, and I am going to go over these. I, I pulled this verbatim out of the uh, Cisco documentation, um, and this is for delays between successive login attempts. Uh, I'm not going to read the, the whole thing here. A Cisco iOS device can accept virtual connections as fast as it can be processed. That's key. That's why you want to have a delay between successive login attempts because if it can, you know, if it can address these login attempts, you know, one after another, one after another, then you could see where somebody could write a script to just send, you know, millions of uh, bogus login attempts to try and eat up your CPU. Uh, introducing the delay, yeah, we went over that. Delays can be enabled in one of the following ways. Through the auto secure command, and we're not going to go over this today because that's a separate uh, video. Through the block four command, um, yeah, I don't know that I like how they wrote this. It, it is a delay, but it's 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 a really hard delay. So I, I, I suppose that's true because you're saying if you know. I have um, two login attempts, two unsuccessful login attempts within, you know, X amount of seconds. Go ahead and block for Y seconds. So that that is a delay of Y seconds based on, you know, the pre-configured number of failures. So technically, yeah. Uh, here it says you must enter this command before issuing the login delay command. If you enter only the login block for command, the default login delay. Uh, time of one second it's automatically enforced that last bit there I would commit that to memory because if you don't um, specify a login delay which we'll go over us in a second that's a global config you don't say login delay five seconds and you just configure the login block for it's automatically going to use a, a default of one second and the range for the login delay command is between uh, is it one or zero I think it's one and, and ten seconds uh, we'll check that out on the CLI. Uh, 